Hello, my name is Cole. My name is Kobe. And my name's Sabrina. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab. That's right. This is the show where we bring the science to you. And we are very, very excited today. If you would like to follow along with the activity that we are doing today, make sure you head over to bit.ly slash Couch Potato Lab to download the lab manual. And throughout the show, we will be taking questions from a variety of different methods. If you'd like to text us, you can text us at the number below 306 five seven zero one zero one three we're also on hashtag twitter so you can tweet us at the at hashtag couch potato lab and make sure to follow us on all of our social media we're on instagram we're on facebook we're on youtube we're on twitter we're on TikTok. all of the good stuff so make sure you are following us today before we get into our very very exciting activities that we have planned for you today let's give a little bit of an introduction to my friends that are with me today who is over here to my left Hello everybody, my name is Kobe. My pronouns are he, him. And a fun fact about me is that I should be in space right now for my space trip to Mars, but that was postponed because I need to learn a little bit more about some tools and some music before I have the credentials to become an astronaut for eyes. Yes, thanks for having me, Cole. Oh, anytime. Thank you so much, Kobe. And let's tweet with the hashtag Hashtag get Kobe to space so we can get him <laughs> up there to do the job that he really, really wants to be doing. Uh, hello, everybody. My name, like I said, is Cole. My pronouns are he and him. And a fun fact about myself is you can't see them, but I am wearing hammer pants right now. If you don't know what those are, maybe your parents know what those are. You should Google them. They're very, very cool. Who is over here to my right? I'm Sabrina. My pronouns are she and her. And a fun fact about me is that, oh gosh, this might have been three, it must have been four years ago already, I went skydiving. Ooh. Wow. Did you like it? Uh, it was, it was an adrenaline rush, but I also felt like I couldn't breathe the whole time, which was not fun. <laughs> so I don't, I want to try bungee jumping next. That's what I want to do next for an adrenaline rush. Very, very exciting. So we have a very, very exciting show, almost as exciting as skydiving, I think. Very exciting show for you guys planned for us today, but, um, uh, Kobe, we yeah, yeah. have to start the show. Can yeah. you just get off your phone? Oh really quick? yeah, we yeah, yeah. I, I was just playing a game of Candy Crush. I'm on level 343, and I'm going to beat my mom. So close. Okay, well, but <laughs> that, but we need to uh, actually start the show. So if you could put the phone away, that would be fantastic. Okay, fine. I know Sabrina has something special to say, right, Sabrina? Yes. Before we get started, we would like to acknowledge that we're on Treaty territory, which it, we're on Treaty Four, coming to you live from Regina, which is the traditional land of the Nehawak, the Nakawe, the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota peoples, as well as the traditional territory of the Métis Michip Nation. So we're very thankful and grateful to be here today. And we also recognize the diversity of our audience who might be coming to us from other treaty territory or unceded territory today. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Now yes! We are get I beat the level, Kobe, Cole. We, we have to start the show. Oh, I mean, right. Yes. Okay. But but what the heck, Cole? Like, um, Sabrina is over there uh, playing with her drill. Well, oh, Sabrina. Yeah. Some of us actually work around here, Kobe. Well, Sabrina, th that is a beautiful drill, but we do actually have to start the show. So if you guys... I you am. This is part of the show. We need to expand the set. So I want this sign to go on the set. I need to put a hole in it though so it can hang from the ceiling. Oh, why don't I just oh. like um, Google a uh, YouTube video so that you can watch it and learn how to do that. I don't need your help, Kofi. Okay, okay, hold on. Uh, you know what? Uh, oh, I've yeah. got a solution to this, all right? Now you might not know it, but both of you, Kofi with your cell phone and Sabrina with your drill, are actually using technology. It might oh. not seem like you're both using technology, but you are both using technology. And technology is simply defined as the application of scientific knowledge for some sort of practical purpose, to get some sort of job done or to solve some sort of problem. And actually, I don't know if you knew this, but we can take parts of both of your technology and combine them together. No and when way. we do that, we get one of these. That's right. Oh. A power <laughs> drill. So. If we take, uh, Sabrina, you were using that lovely hand drill. Yeah, uh, and it didn't there. like work so great. Here's the hole that I made. Yeah, how did, how did you do? It's not good. <laughs> it's, it's not the best, but it does, it does get part of the job done. Now, if we were to take the same sort of technology, but kind of soup it up a little bit, uh, we would get this power drill. So the battery is powering a motor in here, which then turns the uh, drill. And if I give it a bit of a, 
punch here. There we go. I've got a pretty, what do you think, Sabrina? Oh, That's that seemed a lot good, hey? easier than yeah. what I was doing. It was super, super easy. I just was able to press the button. Wow. And it's funny that we were both, we were, we were talking about drills and technology today because it's a little bit of a hint of what today's episode is going to be about. We're going to be talking about screws and all of the lovely uses that we can um, garner from those amazing technologies that have been around for a long time. In fact, screws and the idea of a screw has been around for thousands and thousands of years. And I actually have a very, very special guest I would like to introduce you to. Now, um, I know that I don't look it, but I am, in fact, quite, quite old. And I have a very, very old friend uh, that's coming today as our special guest. I would like to introduce to everybody my good old friend, Archimedes. Hello, wow. hello, my name is Archimedes. <laughs> I am a famous, famous uh, scientist and uh, engineer and inventor and mathematician as well. It's, it's been a great ride, but I'm a famous of all those things um, since ancient Greece. And I made a lot of inventions to help my city, Syracuse. And it's been a while. And I think I'm just gonna showcase some of my um, inventions to you all, if that's all right, Cole. Yes, yes, yes of course, all we have right. some images. Yes, all right, the first one I wanna talk about is my heat ray. Oh, look at that heat ray. Heat rays are, this is what I did was I used a whole bunch of mirrors um, and then use the power of the sun to reflect the light, and eventually it burned attacking ships. Whoa. And, uh, wow. Sort of like what you're doing right now there, yes. Archimedes. Yes. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> wow. So uh, we can imagine that this would be an attacking ship inside. Yes, exactly. Hmm. So we would use mirrors like this and lenses, and we would have the sunlight shine upon here, and I would create a fire just like this. That is fascinating, wow, Archimedes. I am really amazing, truly. Do, do you have any other inventions? That yes, you, you came the, up with? another invention I have is called the Claw of Archimedes, Ooh. and I named it after myself because I'm so great. Yes, yeah, so what this arch um, claw does, it kind of like uses a grappling hook and grabs attacking ships. Um, opposing ships, and what happens there, it's also called the ship shaker. So Ooh. once it has a handle on that ship, it shakes the enemies. So they fall off to the ocean, and look at that, my city is saved once again. Honestly, a it is so hero. great. Fascinating, Archimedes. Fascinating, I know. I gotta ask though, what do you have against opposing ships? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, those, those other kids that just wanna attack and Grab my fortunes because I'm so great. Mm -hmm. I gotta, they have to travel through ship to get to Syracuse. I understand. So, yeah. So, <laughs> um, Archimedes, now we've established that you've, through the, the heat ray uh -huh. and the claw, you've got a lot of stuff that can maybe take out an enemy ship. Uh, do you have any other kind of invention? Anything that uh, possibly has to do with numbers, let's say? Yes. So, for example, pie. Not the delicious con, but the number con. Yeah, right there. 3.141592, and the list goes on. So with my big brain, I found out the derivative and discovered pi. And that correlates with, um, it has a special relationship with the surface area of a circle and a sphere and a cylinder and all that. And I see you're using that in your grade school, learning that in grade 8 and stuff. So... Wow, creds to me, hey? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, Archimedes. Yeah. I mean, you are so prolific <laughs> in your inventions, everything from heat rays to pi. But um, the reason that we brought you on today is for a very specific invention. There was some sor sort of screw that you invented. Yes, Cole, thank you for reminding me. You know, old age really gets you, and uh, my memory's slipping sometimes. But all right, so the other one is called the Archimedes Screw, and I also named it after me, too. So what happens here is that um, I designed a huge ship, um, and this huge ship needs to dispel some water, and this is what the Archimedes Screw does. So it kind of is like a cylinder <coughs> with some screws inside. And once you turn that, it's usually handheld from a low-lying um, pool of water. It kind of travels that water up um, to the upper area or to an, a canal or something. And that's how I dispel the water out of the huge ship so it doesn't sink. Yeah, I'm a genius. That is hey. fascinating. I that is know. super, super fascinating. Well. 
Archimedes, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh -huh. I'm afraid we have to move on to our next activity, but um, I'm so glad that you could take some time out of um, what I'm sure is a very, very busy inventing schedule to join us here on the Couch Potato Lab. Thank you, Cole. I will hope to see you soon in tomorrow's brunch. Of course. Uh, yeah, I would okay. never miss a brunch with Archimedes. Au revoir. Mm -hmm. See you later, Archimedes. Thanks so much. Uh, Sabrina, I, I just realized that Kovi has, we, I hope he comes back. I noticed that is when Archimedes arrived, Kovi left. Yeah, it's too bad that he missed that because that was so interesting. Gives us a little background yeah. about what we're doing today. Uh, well, interesting. Uh, hello, I'm back. Oh, Kovi, there you are. Oh, hello, where'd you I'm go? I'm here. Um, so I just, I just need, my bladder was about to explode, so I need to uh, yeah, <laughs> empty that. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank so you, Kovi. <laughs> Archimedes, um, I just saw him on my way to the bathroom, and there he was, and decided to do a little spotlight. So thank you, Archimedes, for doing that. And I heard all your inventions, and that's great. Um, and I think our activity deals with uh, something that he made today, right, Cole? That is right, Kobe. So we are going to take a look at, Sabrina and Kobe, our lovely scientists, are going to take a look at a couple different designs of an Archimedes screw. And what we're going to notice is there's a lot of cool uses that we can um, see with these Archimedes screws. So let's start with um, Sabrina. You can show us maybe some of the few steps that we uh, are following. And if you want to follow along at home, make sure you have the lab manual downloaded and the materials. Uh, you can find that at bit.ly slash couch potato lab. So Sabrina, why don't you show us some of the first few steps for our Archimedes screw? Sure, sounds good. So you're going to need a water bottle and you're going to want to cut off both the top and the bottom and so the edges are kind of sharp so if you need to ask an adult for help definitely do that when you're cutting this off it's just so that the whole entire radius diameter of the bottle is the same when we're using it mm. and now there's two different ways that we can do this I'm gonna do the first one on the lab manual where we're gonna take a piece of paper and draw a spiral on it to make our Archimedes screw so I'm just gonna draw a spiral at your own discretion. That looks great. <laughs> looks like a snail shell to me, but, and some scissors. Oh, yes. We can get you Thank some of those. You. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to take our spiral and start cutting it out. So I'm just going to start on the line and cut all the way along my line. And now <laughs> this is supposed to, we're going to tape it onto a skewer so that this can act as our Archimedes screw to lift things. Now we're not gonna wanna lift liquids with this, so I think we have some cereal here today Ooh. to use um, mm. as what we're gonna lift. But if you had something smaller, like I know Kobe mentioned, maybe some marbles or just something light that you can use. Mm -hmm. And instead of a skewer, you can also use something like a straw or a pencil or a dowel instead. So those are different alternatives that you can use for, um, sure. for your screw today. Yeah, Sabrina, how's, how's it going? It's good. I'm almost done here. And now we are using construction paper here today. I wouldn't recommend to use anything flimsier like loose leaf or mm. printer paper because I used one when I was practicing. I used cardboard and that worked really well. So if you also have some cardboard, let's just cut that off. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a hole right through the center of my spiral so that it goes all the way down. Now this doesn't really look, looks kind of cool. It looks like that a wind chime. Cool, I was gonna say, yeah. But this is not gonna really lift anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and tape it. Uh, tape it to the sides or glue it. I have some tape down here. Cause I want this to be able to lift stuff. And if there's space in between, then it's just gonna fall right through. So I kind of want it to be close to the middle and I maybe should have made my spiral a bit thicker. So Sabrina, you were saying that it, when, when we get this set up, the idea here is that this will be able to lift things? Yeah, that's able to right. transport stuff? It should be able to move things like from one container to the next. Oh. Maybe if you want to have some cereal, you can lift it out of your cereal box. <laughs> but um, this is not, this does not look like it's going to be able to lift anything because it's kind of folding over. That does not look like the screw that Archimedes mm. showed us, does it, Cole? Uh, not quite. I think, I mean, I, I do appreciate the effort, but I don't know if it's quite going to get the job done. Why don't we check in on Kovi, who I think has a different alternative method for the design of an Archimedes screw. Sounds yes. great. 
All right, so the goal here is to make a screw similar to this. Like, there's a nice spiral. So what happens is that um, whatever solid can go through these loops and try to like travel all the way to the top. And in order to do that, we're going to do um, we're going to have a s different approach to how to make this spiral. So instead of making um, drawing a circle and cutting it like what Sabrina did, what we're going to do is maybe use a different. Um, paper. I'm going to use cardstock. It's a little bit thicker. I'm going to draw four circles. Um, you might need like five or six later on, but I'm going to start off with four circles. So you're going to draw that and make sure that these circles can fit into your plastic um, plastic bottle. All right. So that is the goal. Once you have those four um, circles drawn, you're going to cut it. And since Sabrina took um, my scissors, I'm going to use some magic tricks to cut it instead. Because you know, Sab you know what they call you, Sabrina, the C Sabrina the teenage witch, right? So I'm going to do a little magic by myself. I'm going to put um, a cloth right this here. Is, I, this is wild. Abra, me Kadabra, the whoa. whoa! It's some circles that are cut. Insane! Wow. There's only three though, but that's all right. <laughs> um, so I have three circles right here. So that's um, once you finish that, you can cut that out. The next step is to draw a like a, um, a point or a circle in the middle of your paper. So you, that's where you're going to poke a hole. Um, what I used was a skewer. You can use scissors. But make sure if you're doing anything with scissors or like a skewer or something that's pointy, uh, make sure your parents know and have parental supervision as well. All right, so you're going to poke it through so that you can skewer through um, your um, circles. And once you have that, you're going to use scissors to cut um, so that there's a slit right into the middle. Another oh. magic trick, Kobe? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, no. Mm, yes. <laughs> well, bam. Oh, look. Uh, it's a <gasps> slit right there already. Wow. I'm amazing. Wow. Yes, this just like Archimedes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so once you have circles with slits and a hole, um, you're going to tape these ends together so it can start forming that um, spiral shape, right? So you're going to need either tape or glue um, in order to um, stick, them, stick the two circles together. Yes. Uh, so, so Kobe, this design compared mm -hmm. to Sabrina, what is what would you say is the main difference between this design and uh, Sabrina's? Um, I think the main one is that because I'm drawing these circles, it's more uniform. So the spirals are going to be a lot more uniform throughout the screw. So here's an example of um, what the goal is, right? So the marble or whatever can travel through and like go through the spiral. So you're gonna do that and maybe like a three, four more times, however, so that um, your circles all connect together. And once you have that, you're going to skewer your, um, your circles all with a skewer or a straw or something like that. And then you're going to tape the ends of your circle or your spiral to your um, dowel, your skewer, whatever, so that it stays nice and connected and equal throughout. Kobe, do you have the middle pieces taped too, or just the ends? I'm um, just the ends. Um, it's really hard. I found that to tape the middle ones, so I don't want to like um, interfere or like break the design of it. So okay. I just did the the, t the just the ends. Yeah. So once you have that, you can insert it right into your plastic bottle, and voila! Here is your screw. Wow! Wow! Yeah. That looks great, Kobe. All right. Shall I test it out now? Yes, Let's I think it. so. Perfect. What are oh, you going to try to move with that thing? I have some marbles and some Cheerios. Um, Sabrina, what should I do first? Mm, I feel like Cheerios are lighter. So let's start with the lighter. That's good. All right. So in this little bucket right here, um, I have a whole bunch of Cheerios. Uh, I'm going to start spinning it so it kind of goes into the bottle. Maybe scoop it up just a little bit. Oops. Cool. cool. All right, I have one. I have one Cheerio. Okay. <gasps> At an angle, I will start spinning. It's definitely moving. Faster, faster, oh, faster, look at faster, that. faster. Wow. Ta da! <gasps> Ooh. And wow. it made it into the bin. Wow. Kobe, that was amazing. I know, I'm so great. <laughs> I am, I'm actually kind of shocked that <laughs> that worked so well. That was Me too. <laughs> super, super cool. Uh, I think I also want to try the marble, um, Cole, if that's okay. Yes, please. Nice. I would love to see the marble. Yeah. All right. So um, 
if the hole right here is too small, you can use scissors to cut it open. I just like to keep it so right there. Um, but yeah, so if you can cut the hole in the tip, so that can be a little bit bigger, so your Cheerios or marbles can enter the bottle a little faster. All right. Kobe, does it matter how you're holding it? Like, I was going to hold mine just, like, up and down like this. Would that matter? Um, yes, Sabrina, good question. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, um, as you can see, when Archimedes um, talked about his screw, or the Archimedes screw, it was on a little angle, so that there's one tip that's closer to the bottom, and the other end of it is near the top of it. So ideally, we want something like this. So we have two containers that are elevated. Yeah. And your 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 screw will be angled. So if I keep spinning, Look at that. Wow. wow! Wow! The marble made it. Hey. A marble and a cheerio. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. And that is the Archimedes screw. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. Kobe, that was fantastic. And if you are following along at home. Make sure, and you're building your Archimedes screws, make sure to text us pictures of your Archimedes screw at 306-570-1013, or you can tweet us using the hashtag CouchPotatoLab. Um, we actually do, and if you have any questions, please send us, that, uh, send us those questions. Um, we have one right here. This is from the Hayes Brothers. Who else? <laughs> and the question is, and I don't know, I think Archimedes himself is actually gone, so we won't be able to ask him, but I'm curious to know if either Kobe or Sabrina know, uh, when did Archimedes make his screw? Uh, when did Archimedes make his screw? Kobe, you got that? Yes, yeah, so while I was talking to um, Archimedes um, when I went to the bathroom, um, he told me that he actually came from 3rd century BCE, and that's when he um, made his um, screw. Yeah, so 3rd wow. century BCE, before Common Era. That mm -hmm. is that a very is long old. time. Yeah, very, very long time ago. And there was actually a second part of this, this question that I think we're going to save because we might answer it later on in the episode. It says, where is a screw like this currently in use? We are going to see a lot of examples of real life practical versions of an Archimedes screw. Now, before we move on to that, though, I want to take some time to talk about something called positive displacement. All right. Now, we saw the Archimedes screw and we saw that um, it has a lot of different uses. And one of the uses of the Archimedes screw is using it as a pump through something called positive displacement. So thank you, Sabrina. I'm going to bring my lovely chalkboard in here. Um, I drew this myself, which <laughs> if anybody watching knows me personally will be very surprised to hear that. But I did draw this myself. And this is a diagram of what we would call a positive displacement pump. Okay. Now it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually not. A positive displacement pump is a type of pump, which a pump is just something that sort of pushes um, a fluid from one end to the other. So on any kind of pump, we're going to have what we would call an input or an inlet and an output or an outlet. So the input is where the fluid enters the system, okay? The output is where it leaves, where it goes out. So the job of a pump is to take that fluid, whatever that is, it could be water, it could be oil, it could be a lot of different things. The job of a pump is to take that fluid from one end to the other. And the way that a positive displacement pump works is as the fluid enters through the pump, it gets trapped in this middle part here. And when it gets trapped, it builds up a lot of a force. And that force is then used to displace. That's where the word displacement comes from. That force is used to displace the fluid to the other side of the pump and force it outside of the pump through the output. All right. So a positive displacement pump, there's lots of different examples of this in real life. And we're going to be seeing something next, actually, in our, in our next activity. And we'll, we'll look at a, a video later of how an Archimedes screw and positive displa displacement pumps work together. So Sabrina, I believe you have an interesting design over there that might um, b could be used to carry some liquids, sort of like a positive displacement pump. You bet I do. So I have a little hose here that I duct tape around this bottle. Basically the same idea as what we were doing before with the um, Archimedes screws with cereal, except for this one, the water should go in this end and come out this end. So I have some water in this cup right now that I'll test. I don't think you'll be able to see it because I have it taped so much, but you should be able to see it come out at the end. So while I'm doing this, I'm dipping my hose in water every single time it goes into the bucket. I think I do see some water going through that Do you see it moving? There. Yeah, I do. Should, oh. <gasps> Should be coming out soon. Nice, it did come out. I saw some. Ooh. 
So this is the same idea. So I have it on the same angle as what Kobe was mentioning before since it worked so well for him. And every time I dip it in, it comes out. That is fascinating. So Sabrina, you're using this really, really simple design to move a liquid from one container to another. Right. That's very cool. And, po very cool. and positive displacement even. Interesting. Yeah. Kobe, do you have any kind of other uh, positive displacement tube design that we could take a look at? Yes, cool. So I made something very, very similar to what um, Sabrina did as well. So instead of using um, those, uh, I used a PVC pipe and um, really, really s um, thin tubing as well. So pretty much same idea is that the water will end from enter from one end, so this will be the input, and then it will exit from the other end, which is the output of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same thing, but instead I'm going to use some food, food coloring so that we might be able to see the liquid go through the tube mm. just a little bit better. And I feel like because your tube is a little bit thinner, maybe you have less tape than me, so you'll be able to see it better mm -hmm. for sure. Um, because it is thinner, it might not go through as well as, as well. yours. So I think our, yeah, but we'll see what happens. So Kobe, are you, are you using the same technique that Sabrina was using of twisting the tube to pull the liquid yeah, up? Yeah, so like, um, like how Archimedes um, described his screw, it is handheld. So um, I'm going to twist it one way and hopefully it enters, <laughs> uh, it exits the other one as well, from the other end. I don't think it's working quite well. <laughs> okay. All right. How's it working, Kobe? All of it, mm, I think it's too, too <laughs> thin. <laughs> too it's thin. too thin. There's there might not be some blockages inside the tube. But yeah, Sabrina has worked really well. So nicely done, Sabrina. Yeah. yeah. I think I just had thicker <laughs> tubing, which is, I guess, what you need. Now we know. Well, well done, Sabrina. Now, I actually have um, a short little video that we're going to look at of an Archimedes screw in action. So earlier, we had um, a question from the Hayes brothers. And they were asking whether we could see our, uh, examples of an Archimedes screw in real life. And we definitely can. Now, this video that we're about to watch is what we're going to see is the use of an Archimedes screw to actually ge generate electricity. Now, uh, we had my power drill working um, before. And we're going to see how um, a, a person uses an Archimedes screw to actually generate electricity to power a power drill. So uh, see if we can get that video pulled up here. Here it is. So um, we'll watch this and I'll kind of, I'll commentate as we go through what's going on here. So here we see inside that yellow piece uh, that you can see rotating, that is the screw itself. And at the top of the yellow uh, screw, you see that long white PVC pipe. There's water flowing through that, all right? So you can see water coming from a creek out here somewhere in the forest. And the water is flowing through that tube and then down past the Archimedes screw that we'll see in a second. Now, when the water is being pulled by the Archimedes screw, we can use that to actually create some power. So you can see the water flowing past the screw right there. And in a second, you're going to see, and the, here's the output of our pump here, that's the water coming out. You're going to see how this screw actually is able to generate some electricity. So again, the water is pulling past. Now, if you've ever heard of like a hydropower dam, a hydroelectric electric dam, this is sort of the same principle. Now here we go. So you can see at the top here, this um, screw is turning that wheel, which is then providing electricity to this big black box, which is a generator. And that generator is going to turn that um, energy into electrical energy so that this guy can use his drill. And he's going to spin it up there. There you go. So that drill is being purely powered by hydropower through a Archimedes screw. So that's pretty cool. We've That's one example of what an Archimedes screw can do for us. But I actually have a question. Now, I was wondering, we had that, that person in that video had water going through that tube. And uh, it was traveling past the Archimedes screw and we were using that water to generate power, which then generated electricity. And then we could run a drill just like this. But I'm wondering if you could use a different type of fluid, a different liquid. And if you did use a different fluid, like let's say something thicker, something with more viscosity, like corn syrup or oil. Well, what would the effect of that be? But first, I think I need a refresher. I need an explanation of what viscosity actually means, and maybe a couple demonstrations. So I'm going to ask my scientist friend, Sabrina, for a little demonstration and a little explanation on viscosity. 
Absolutely. And I'll need your help, Cole. I'll sure. need you to time me soon. Oh, sure. But right now, I'm going to fill up this first test tube with some water because that's what we've been using today. We want to start with water. And I'm going to fill up the second tube with something called glycerin. And this glycer glycerin. glycerin. I think both work. <laughs> potato, potato. Oh, and you can see already, it's a lot thicker when I pour it in there. I guess I can, pr oh, I'll fill her up. Fill her up. That's Fill her the up. eyes motto. So this test is a viscosity test. And viscosity is more or less how thick a liquid is. So I'm going to drop these marbles in. And we'll see how long it takes to get to the bottom. Do you think that'll work, Kobe? Yeah. So do you want me to time this, Sabrina? You can time it, I guess. But we can also maybe, hopefully with our own eyes, we'll be able to see sure. the different viscosities. Sure, yeah, that's a good By idea. me dropping these in. OK, are we ready? I'm so ready. Three, two, one. Oh, oh wow. wow. I don't think my timer is <laughs> necessary. That was definitely not necessary. <laughs> that so look is at how crazy. slow that marble is going down. And they were the same size marbles, same weight, everything. So because it took so much longer for this marble to go down, we say that has a higher viscosity. So if we were going to try and pull this through um, my Archimedes screw with this, I think it would take a lot longer because it's a lot harder to pull up through this. So we actually have something called a viscosity rating and water has a viscosity of one CP and gly gly glycerin, glycerin? Yeah. <laughs> has a viscosity rating of 1,000 to 2,000. So that is a big difference that we have here. And I know Kobe, you have some that you can test over there too, right? Yeah, so what I'm going to use oh. today is oil and I'm going to test corn syrup. And corn syrup is, I think both are very, very different, right? So I assume the viscosity is going to be different as well and probably greater um, than water. So let's test out oil first. So, so far our viscosity champion for our most viscous liquid is glycerin. But we might have a new champion after I'm seeing some of these pours. Th what are you pouring into that graduated cylinder right now, Kobe? All right, the first one is canola oil. Canola oil. Canola all right. oil. And the next one I'm going to test out is corn syrup. Corn syrup. Now, oh, yeah. I've used corn syrup before because I like to do a lot of baking in my spare time. Mm. And I know that corn syrup is pretty thick. When you try to pour it out, it falls out very, very slowly. So I'm assuming that it's pretty viscous. But let's take a look. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, corn syrup's used for like the sweets, all our candy. Mm -hmm. It makes it nice and sticky. All right. Okay, that should be enough. All right, Cole, what do you think? Which one's going to be more viscous, well, oil or corn syrup? So I think <laughs> this is really, really tough. But I saw the glycerin. I think the corn syrup actually might be our new viscosity champion. It looks really, really thick. But the marble test will show our true um, our true champion of, of the viscosity test. Yes. All right. Let's test it out in three, two, one, and droop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's still going. Is that the corn syrup, the one that we're still watching? Yeah, that's corn syrup right here. And this is this one's oil. So as Amazing. you can see, if you rewind it back, um, the co the oil, the marble went like pretty much straight through, kind of similar to um, Sabrina's water test. And this is because um, oil has about a CP of 65. And corn syrup, on the other hand, its CP is about 2,000 to 3,000. Whoa. Yes, yeah, so like two times or three times more more than the glycerin. Crazy. And I thought glycerin was viscous, but I guess I don't know much because that corn syrup sure was viscous. I guess that is our new viscosity champion. Well, <laughs> thanks so much for uh, demonstrating some viscosity demos for me. And hopefully you were following along at home and maybe this is something that you can try as well. You can try some different viscosity tests around. And if you do, make sure to let us know. You can text us using the number 306-570-1013, or you can tweet us using the hashtag CouchPotatoLab. Also, if you have any questions about anything that you're seeing here today, feel free to text us, to tweet us, to do whatever you need to do to get those questions to us. We actually do have a question, um, and I'm going to ask my viscosity expert, Sabrina, over here, a question from Theo. Theo is asking, what actually makes something more viscous? We saw that there was different viscosities between water and corn syrup, let's say. But Sabrina, what actually determines how viscous something is? So 
uh, something that is has a high viscosity, like the corn syrup or the glycerin, glycerin, whatever Kobe wants to call it, <laughs> um, it has a lot of internal friction. So the molecules themselves have a lot of friction that makes it move a lot slower or look appear a lot thicker. So we talked in a few towards the beginning, I think. Um, so if you want to go back to learn about what friction is, you definitely can, and then you can apply it to viscosity because friction is involved in viscosity. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Yeah. So I think what we've learned from that is if I was trying to make a generator like that fellow in the video was, I definitely wouldn't want to use something like corn syrup or glycerin. It might be too viscous to generate enough power. So we're going to stick with water. But on the subject of water, if I wanted to make one of those pumps, I would be scared of something. You know, I'm a, I'm a tech guy, all right? I have five phones and I have seven laptops and four <laughs> iPads on me at any given wow. time. I'm always oh walking gosh. around. I'm always checking my socials. I'm like this, okay, <laughs> checking my socials. Now, I would be worried if I was designing one of these Archimedes screws and using it as a positive displacement pump using water, what would happen if I dropped one of my seven computers into the water? Would that, like, would it be able to survive? Are, are, are technologies that we use water resistant? Is Sabrina, do you know the answer to this? Well, I can kind of help you out there, Cole. So when you say water resistant, I don't really know what you mean. So I'm going to kind of give you definitions and then you can let me know which okay. one you meant. So water resistant is like the, the bottom level of water resistancy. So water resistant is basically just letting the water not absorb as much into something. So it's basically just improving the chances of surviving an encounter with water. So um, if your phone's water resistant and you drop it in water, it's probably not going to make it, but there's a small chance. And then water repellent is a step up from water resistant. So water repellent is actually something, it makes something hydrophobic, which is water fearing. So it's going to hopefully stop the water, but also not guaranteed. And then we have waterproof. So waterproof is 100%. The water is not getting in there. So there's not a lot of waterproof things out there. Like if you think about an umbrella, an umbrella doesn't even have waterproof material. It's made out of water repellent material. So if you stand outside in the rain all day, there is still a chance that you might get a little bit wet. Now you were talking about your phone and your technologies, mm -hmm. what you're worried about. So technology actually has something called an IP rating, which is called an ingress protection rating scale. So it's used for all technology. If you want to Google what your technology is, it should pop up. And so what it is, it'll say IP, and then there'll be two numbers that follow it. And that first number is on a scale of zero to eight to tell you how resistant your technology is to particles. So like dust or wind or anything that might get into your phone. And then the second number is how resistant it is to water or other liquids. So if we take, I'll take my phone, here we go. My phone is an iPhone 8. Um, let's see how water resistant it is. I'll dump it in the water, see if it survives. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina. Wow! Oh what my did you just goodness, do? my phone survived. So <laughs> my phone has an IP rating of 67. So here we go. It survived. Sorry, wow. What, what it's okay. It looks a little wet on the back. What but was the IP rating again? 67. 67. So if you think on a scale of 0 to 8, that's pretty high. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. So I guess 6 out of 8 is pretty good. Mm -hmm. 7 out of 8 is pretty good. It's not perfect. I would not take my phone in the shower with me. I would definitely not ever try that again. Do not try this at home. But Well, I mean, I might as cool. well test mine. Okay, sure. Because Let's I have see so it. many phones. <laughs> This is actually a brand new model. That's why it looks so thin. Wow, an iPhone uh, well, 12. Well, I don't even want to say the brand because <laughs> I might get in trouble. <laughs> so I'm just going to say this is a prototype. I'm going to dunk this in really quick. Here we go. Ba bam And look at that. Ooh. If I pull it out now and I engage um, viscous mode, make it makes it thicker, you can actually see that the phone is totally fine. So what... <laughs> What rating does this phone have, Sabrina? What rating do I have? Well, if I can use my eyes correctly to know the model mm -hmm. of your phone, yes. I think I know it. I think yours has the same as mine, actually. So an IP67. A 67, not a bad. A 67. Well, so Kobe, I think it's your turn to test your yes, phone. Yes, I need to participate as well. So I also ha I'd have a different phone. I don't have an Apple phone like theirs. I have an Android, and I think Androids are so much better, but we'll see what happens. Um, so here's my bottle of water, um, cup or bowl of water, and I'm going to drop it. <gasps> oh, swish it in. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, Kobe, oh you don't wow. Need to do that. You think yours is like waterproof? Yeah, and it's fine. 
I think. Oh shoot, I just dropped it. <gasps> I hope it's now this IP rating has nothing to do with if yeah, you drop it's fine. it. Like there you go. Whoa, it's working look at that. Mm. Nice. Very resistant. <laughs> so Kovi, I hate to burst your bubble here, but your phone actually has the same IP rating as both mine and Cole's. Actually? Actually. What? It has what? an IP rating of sixty seven. But your phone actually has a bit newer technology that helps make it more water repellent. So while mm. mine and Kohl's has the same makeup inside, yours has extra protectant around it. But it didn't increase the rating, so... Okay, I see. Well, Ali's, um, it's different material, so maybe I have the upper edge on that. You very yeah, well could. Yeah, but I don't know, should we be testing this at home? <laughs> we should not be definitely testing Definitely not. We definitely don't want to do that. Um, we're all, we, we can test it because we have, you know, these super water-resistant phones. And also, like I said, I have so many phones that if something happened to Sabrina or Kobe's, I would just give them one of mine and everything would be okay. Right, so an IP rating of 67 is not waterproof, I would say it's probably the very bottom of water resistant, maybe water repellent, but I wouldn't even say that. Water resistant, don't take it swimming with you. Fact check where your phone, what IP rating it has. <laughs> yeah, so be careful out there with those phones. Don't be dunking them in water like we were doing. That was just for a demonstration, but all of this talk about water has not only got me thirsty, but it also has got me thinking about something that I've heard about, which is hydraulics. Hydraulics, and I, I'm pretty sure that hydraulics <coughs> is a system that we can use using water to get a couple of different tasks done, to solve some problems. Now, Sabrina is the expert on viscosity, but Kovi is the expert on hy hydraulics. So let's throw to Kovi and let's see what he has to say about hydraulic systems. Oh, okay, hello. Next, uh, so we talked about on um, the Archimedes screw, and that's also used um, as an invention, or it's an invention to move water. Um, hyd the hydraulic system is similar in that way as well. So what happens here is that when we apply pressure to one end um, of the hydraulic system, that force will change the pressure inside, um, it increase the pressure inside the tube or something like that. So the water increases and it shoots out from the other end. And here's a little graphic that will show you what kind of like a hydraulic is. Yeah, so when we're um, put pushing the piston rod inside, it increases um, the pressure and it decreases the volume. That allows the water to be displaced and move through um, the system so it can be launched to the other end. And I have uh, created a hydraulic bridge to kind of demonstrate that. So here's a bridge that I made last night. And as you can see, there is a tube, um, a syringe right here, and I have the other syringe. So I'm going to fill this syringe with some water. And then, I, oops. Oh, careful there. <laughs> oops. Okay, and then I'm going to attach one end, this end um, of the syringe to the tube. So when I'm applying force um, to the syringe, um, it's going to change the pressure inside. It's going to move that water, increasing the speed, and it's going to reach to the other end. Eventually, this is going to extend, allowing the bridge to move up. Okay, are you ready? We're ready. I'm All so right. ready. Three, two, one. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my wow. goodness. Kobe, that's, that's crazy. That's so crazy. Woo. So wait, there's not any kind of like machine doing this it's just the water yeah so it's the water the, uh, the contraption moves the water allowing it to move so like there are hydraulic systems in your for example your water guns right when you're pressing it, it increases or the piston rod will um, kind of enter the system and it's going to change the volume increase the pressure and then shoot that water out so you can beat your friends <laughs> yes yeah. Amazing. So should I try this one more time? Uh, yeah, let's see. I that that see was it. really, really cool. All right. So fill the water from <coughs> one end, apply pressure. I mean, apply force, changing the pressure, changing the speed, and wa-bam. Whoa. 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 We're getting some leakage there. That's OK. There you go. And then let's close it. Very cool. Yeah. Kobe, that is, bridge. that is amazing. Now, Kobe, does, <laughs> is this kind of technology actually used in real life in anything besides water guns? Like, I know that I think I've heard of hydraulic systems in, like, automobiles and stuff like that. Yeah, so all hydraulic systems are like in cranes and auto automobiles as well and in big um, industrial settings as well. So that's usually for moving things around or something that's heavy. We're going to rely on water as um, 
uh, as a resource to move and use that as a force. Yeah. Very, very mm -hmm. cool. Thank you, Kobe, for talk to you, talking to us about hydraulic systems. And if you at home have any questions about hydraulic systems for our Ask a Scientist uh, segment, which is coming up very, very soon, you can text us at 306 5701013 or you can tweet us at the hashtag couch potato lab we want to see all of the different pictures that you might have of an hydraulic system that you can find around the house you can follow us on instagram and facebook and youtube TikTok and twitter and you can send us all of these posts these lovely pictures that you might be taking and videos of different hydraulic systems around um, where you are that would be really, really cool. I think we would really appreciate that. And if you do have any other questions about hydraulic systems or about pumps or Archimedes screw, or maybe we could try to find Archimedes and bring him back at some point in time, um, <laughs> if you know where he is, please text us, tweet us, and that would be fantastic. Now, I'm thinking back to our friend, our good old pal Archimedes, and his um, titular screw. Now, what I'm thinking of is the Hayes brothers asked a question earlier in the episode that we promised that we would get to, and that's real life examples of Archimedes screws. We saw that video that we watched earlier of the person that made a generator out of an Archimedes screw. But Sabrina, I was wondering if there's any other more common things, some, something that maybe we would have around our house or at the farm maybe, that um, uses an Archimedes screw. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a farm girl. And the first thing <laughs> I thought of when we were planning for this episode is a grain auger. So a grain auger, there we go, is you can see inside it looks exactly like all the screws we've been talking about. And so at the bottom, there'll be a bucket where grain goes into and then it use a motor to power that all the way up into a granary. So that is how a screw, you would see that around a farm. But there's also other things that have art community screws in them, such as a snowblower. So a snowblower will get the snow moving, but it's actually a horizontal screw. We've all been talking about screws at an angle like this, but this one would be horizontal and it'll pull the snow, but it'll still shoot it up out the end. So that is still a positive displacement, which is necessary when we're talking about an Archimedes screw. And last but not least is if you ever have a clogged drain, you can try all the remedies and usually the last thing that can unclog your drain is something called a drain snake. And so I don't have a picture, but it's basically an Archimedes screw that you stick in your drain and you pull out and all the gunk will come with it just because of the displacement of the screw that you're able to turn and bring it all up, kind of like the drill that we were using mm -hmm. before when you push the drill into the wood, it brings all the other wood up just like it would out of the drain. Sabrina, I have a quick question about yes, that um, cool snake thing. So the gunk, does it turn into snakes? Is that why it's called the something snake? It <laughs> doesn't. I think it's probably <coughs> called a snake because it's so like slithery, you know? It's not, it's not like uniform or it's not like a solid. It just like squiggles. And if you really wanted to, you could probably shape it like a snake and scare your friends and family. Excellent. Mm, well, Sabrina, thank you so much for giving us some real life examples of where we can find an Archimedes screw in our day-to-day -day life. But we have reached the point in our show where we are taking your questions. So this is a little segment we, we like to call Ask a Scientist. So we've got lots of questions coming in for our two lovely scientists here, all about different things that have to do with hydraulics and Archimedes screws. And our first question comes from Sophia. Sophia asks, are brakes hydraulic as well? Kobe, do you um, know the answer to that? Yes, so brakes are also <coughs> hydraulics as well. It's kind of like an arrangement of a braking mechanism or the hydraulic braking mechanism. And instead of um, water, um, it's going to use a braking fluid. And this braking fluid is made out of glycoethers or diethylene glycol, so that is the chemical in the brake fluid. And what happens there is that we're changing the pressure from the controlling mechanism, so that um, you able to like um, control um, the brake and then controls the pressure from the controlling mechanism to the brake system. So that eventually um, displaces the water and allows you to brake. Yeah. Wow, very interesting. Thank you, Kobe. So I guess there's hydraulic <coughs> systems everywhere we look, and you could probably find some around the house uh, where you are as well. There's another question coming in here, and it's asking, before we were talking about positive displacement pumps, which is just a type of a pump that um, can be used to move fluid, and this question is asking us, can a positive displacement pump run backwards? Sabrina, do you know the answer to this? Yeah, I do, and I'll pull out my little model here. I kind of 
the tape didn't hold too well. But so when we're doing this, we want it to run this way, right? We want to pick up the water from here and pull it all the way up. But if we were to use it the other way, the water, it would be like the gravity in that video that we saw, and it would be able to actually create power. So it wouldn't be positive displacement anymore. And instead of using a pump to push it through like that, you would actually be creating energy or power through putting water th through there. But you wouldn't be able to use it as a pump per se. It would be gravity feeding through the pump the opposite way. Awesome. Mm. Thank you very much. So positive displacement pumps, we need to make sure that um, we are running those the correct way. And we have a, an, I don't know if this is a question, more of a comment, but it's coming in from the Hayes brothers, of course. And the Hayes brothers want to say, uh, they want to tell our scientists, so I'm, I'm going to inform Covey and Sabrina of this, that their dad showed them a picture of the Buffalo Pound water treatment plant and it involves hydraulics. Oh, so, well, Kobe, did you know that, that the Buffalo Pound water treatment plant has hydraulic systems? Um, I'm not surprised that the Buffalo water system treatment plant has hydraulics as well, because hydraulics are very, very important in, mix, in those systems as well to move things. So, like, yes, wow, what an interesting, so cool. Hydraulic <laughs> systems are everywhere, and I know that the Buffalo Pound water treatment plant that we have here just outside of Regina is used to treat the water that we use for the city. So thank you, Hayes Brothers, and to the Hayes Brothers' dad for um, talk, uh, bringing that up, the Buffalo Pound Water Treatment Plant, and just another example that hydraulic systems are everywhere. Now, we have another question that's coming in that's not exactly related to hydraulics, but it is very, very important. Um, do our scientists know if there is ICE camp this summer? Does anybody have an uh, Sabrina, do you know? I do know, and I'm so excited that ICE camp start next week. <gasps> I'm Woo! so excited. So we have lots of eyes camp going on starting next week. We have eyes, all girls, and code makers. So you can sign up online, find it on any of our social medias, and definitely join us this summer for two hours a week, for as many weeks as you want, I suppose. Two but two each week, day. two hours a day. Two hours a day, not yeah. two hours Whoa, a week. Even better. <laughs> getting ahead of myself here two hours a day so you can sign up from 9 to 11 or 1 to 3 for whichever camp you want and join your instructors online with some really cool activities we have planned this summer i'm very mm. excited sabrina i heard a rumor that you're actually going to be one of the instructors for next Whoa, week hey? lucky. i am that's why i'm so excited so we get to test run all the activities next week and then do them every single week uh, for the rest of the summer until then that sounds fantastic. If you want more information about registering for Eyes Camp, please head to the Eyes website and you can find all of that information or feel free to send us a text at 306-570-1013 or tweet us using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab, even if you want to just ask us a question about camp because we would love to answer all of those types of questions. And you can follow us on all of these different types of social media that you see on the screen and somebody will be there to answer your questions about camp. Now we do have two more questions, I believe. Uh, the next question is another Couch Potato Lab related question. Somebody is wondering if there's going to be an episode tomorrow because there is, it's Canada Day tomorrow as far, from what I remember. So Kovi, are we still going to do an episode? Yes, there is an episode for tomorrow. I'm hearing what? Yeah, that's the episode name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to learn a lot about um, what sound is in the anatomy of your ear. Um, you're going to see Kat, uh, Mackenzie, and what other person? A Which surprise guest. A surprise guest. <laughs> <I hear. laughs> mm -hmm. Could be Archimedes. Yes, Archimedes. <gasps> Archimedes is back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there is going to be another episode, and it's going to be a great one. That sounds Amazing. That sounds super, super exciting. I can't wait. I know I will be tuning in. That'll be part of my Canada Day festivities. Yeah. I won't be watching the fireworks. I'll be watching the Couch Potato Lab. Now, Sabrina, one final question. We've been talking so much about power and so much about water and all of these things. Now, I'm wondering, what if we were creating power, I remember that Archimedes screw uh, that was generating that electricity for the drill. What kind of power is that actually called if you're, if you're generating power using water? So that's actually called uh, hydropower. So you, you were mentioning before to call um, hydroelectric dams. Hydro just means water. So that's like basically saying water power. There you go. So yeah. if you are powering something using water, that would be called hydropower. That's excellent. Well, that is all the questions that we have. So thank you so much for sending us your questions. That was Ask a Scientist. Now. We are reaching, we are getting towards the end of our episode today, but before we go, we need to make sure that we let you know of a very, very exciting 
thing that we need to talk about. And we've been doing this for the last couple of weeks, I believe. And that is a giveaway. <gasps> a giveaway. Oh my gosh, giveaway. Can you believe it? Now, if you follow us on Instagram, which you should if you're not already, you will see um, there is a giveaway for a free week of camp. That's right. The very camp that we were just talking about, the one that you might even have Sabrina as your instructor, which oh, lucky you, that would be awesome. <laughs> you're, we're giving it away free. Can you believe that? That's quite the value. Now, all you have to do if you want to know or if you want to win this free week of camp is answer the following question. Answer the following. No, Kovi, uh, you're telling me we don't have to answer the following no, question. No, no, no. So there's two. So the first one oh. is an uh, Instagram giveaway. Of course. That's a free week of camp. Yes. So that's the totally different and thing. And all they have to do is follow us on Instagram? Follow Instagram, read the post um, on our Instagram, and then mm. you'll figure out how. But mm. Cole, you were talking about the second giveaway. Oh, yes. Two we, giveaways. I mean, we're so, we're, we are so uh, just giving here at Eyes <laughs> that I can't, <laughs> give, I can't get all the giveaways that we're doing straight in my head. So yes, like Kobe said, there is an Instagram giveaway where all you have to do is just follow us on Instagram. Basically the easiest thing in the world. Uh, but the second giveaway is a bit of a riddle, I would say. Okay, it's a bit of a question that I'm going to ask right now. And only the most astute Couch Potato Lab <laughs> viewers. Tater tot, you ta might Tater say. tots, I should say, of course. Uh, only the most astute Couch Tater, tater Lab videos um, will be able to answer this. Now, we're going to roll a hint video here that gives you a clue as to what the riddle is. I may have gotten a little hungry in this time, and I... Ate my <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was that was beautiful. Um, so, like what what you just saw there was a clip from episode twenty seven. Of course, we all remember episode twenty seven. Don't be a Freud of psych. Now, the question that we need to know is what treat did Cat and Katie eat in the delayed gratification experiment? What treat did they eat? If you know the answer, please tweet us using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab, or you can send us a text message at the number below, 306-570-1013. Now, if you have the answer correct, we are going to draw randomly from the correct answers. And so you can win some eyes swag as well as your very own potato clock. Ooh. That's right. It's not only a clock, it's a potato. <laughs> you get the best of both worlds. My two favorite things, time and spuds. <laughs> so you could win a potato clock if you uh, get the correct answer to our giveaway that is happening next week. And even if you don't get the correct answer, that's fine because we've got two giveaways that I was just reminded of. So you can just follow us on Instagram and you could have a chance to win a free week of camp. Remember, you could be in Sabrina's group, <gasps> which I mean, the, the, you know, that's priceless, okay? So you gotta make sure that you're entering these giveaways. So that is it for us today at the Couch Potato Lab. Make sure that you go on to bit.ly slash Couch Potato Lab to download next episode's lab manual. We will have an episode tomorrow. We know it's Canada Day, but we have one ready to rock for you guys. So make sure you download the lab manual if you would like to follow along. We wanna thank everybody that sent in questions. We want to thank everybody that's watching. I want to thank my lovely scientists for joining me today. And we also want to thank Actua and the University of Regina for supporting us and being, uh, giving us the space and the uh, opportunity to make the Couch Potato Lab. So from all of us here at the Couch Potato Lab, we want to say thank you, and we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.